Good morning, everybody. So today what we're going to do is talk about Egyptian art. So in our last video, we were talking about prehistoric art, and now we're moving a little bit further ahead in the timeline to Egyptian art. Egyptian art took place between uh, 2920 BC and 3095 AD. So Egyptian culture made an enormous contribution to the history of art. It was one of the earliest and longest living of all the ancient art forms around the Mediterranean. So it was renowned for its famous Egyptian pyramids. So you guys can see right here on the screen, we have the Egyptian pyramids, as well as hieroglyphics. These are the hieroglyphics here. It was a writing script based on pictures and symbols. Egyptian art was very political, social, and it worshiped many gods and rulers. The function of Egyptian art was twofold. First, to glorify the gods, including the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh was the ruler of the time, and it was to facilitate the humid passage from afterlife. The second purpose and function of Egyptian art was to assert propagandize and preserve the values of the day. So that means the Egyptians wanted to look cool for all of the other countries and cultures around the world. So they made things big, they made art big. Due to the general stability of Egyptian life and cultures, all art, including architecture and sculpture, as well as painting, metalwork, goldsmithing and ceramics, were characterized by a highly conservative adherence to traditional rules, which favored order and form over creativity and artistic expression. This means the artists weren't allowed to be creative. They had rules they had to follow. If you broke the rules, off with your head. So let's look at some of the different rules and how these things functioned. So let's talk about the actual artist. So Egyptian sculptors and painters were not artists in the modern sense of being a creative person like you, our students. Ancient Egyptian art was rather the work of paid artisans who were trained and who then worked as part of a team. The lead craftsman would work alongside new and older craftsmen. He would never be allowed to put his name on projects. Many master craftsmen reached positions of influence and social importance. Some were highly respected, and in later times, they were worshipped. The credit for most of the work was actually the person who asked the work to be done. So if Pharaoh said, okay, slaves, build the pyramid, it wouldn't actually go to any of the credit to the actual workers. The workers would get the credit for Pharaoh. So Pharaoh would be like, I built the pyramid, but we know he didn't touch the pyramid at all. So let's talk about some of the rules of painting. So like I said, Egyptian art was highly religious. Most artwork involved the depiction of many gods and goddesses of whom the Pharaoh was one of them. There were strict rules for painting. For example, in figure painting, the size of figures were calculated purely by reference to a person's social status, rather than normal art rules and linear perspective. So if the person was rich and famous and really well known, his sculpture would be much larger. If a person was known by few, his sculpture was a lot smaller. The same formula for painting the human figure was used over hundreds of years, if not thousands. Heads and legs are always in profile, and eyes and upper body was always viewed from the front. For Egyptian sculpture and statues, the rule stated that male statues should be darker than female ones when seated, and the subject's hands should always be on their knees. Gods, too, were depicted uh, in their position of the hierarchy of deities and always in the same guise. For instance, Horus, the sky god, was always represented with a falcon head, like this one here. And Anubis, the god of funeral rites, was always depicted with a jackal's head. Stay tuned, we're going to do one more video after this. <laughs> 